Good day guys. This is what I do for a living. I sell bottled water. I started my business uh, just over 16 years ago. Actually, I started my business November 2, 2002. Um, before I started this water business, I used to be a, a plate worker. And a plate worker is a little bit like a sheet metal worker, but I would work with thicker material from uh, one eighth of an inch all the way up to inch and a half plate. And um, I was having more and more problems with my eyes in a dark plate shop due to a, a, a botched eye surgery I had in 1993. Um, so um, long story short, I need a, a lot of bright light uh, so I can see properly. And um, in a dark plate shop, uh, it was extremely difficult uh, to work under those, uh, those uh, dim conditions. So. Um, uh, my parents uh, here in French River had a property, 112 acres, and, and I knew they had this uh, beautiful spring water. And uh, so I decided uh, maybe I can start a business off my parents' garage. And I talked to them, and they thought it was a good idea. And yeah, so that's how I started my business. I was uh, not living here at the time, I had my own house. And uh, three years after I started my business, my parents uh, were getting older, they wanted to move to the city and uh, they were ready to, to sell their property, the house and the garage and the whole bit. And uh, me and my wife, we had a chat and uh, yeah, so we, uh, we, bought, we sold our house and uh, we bought my parents' property. And uh, it was good timing because uh, I had already been three years in business and you know I was running that off my parents garage so uh, it was a good time for me to take over. So anyways today I will show you um, how the whole process uh, works. Okay the spring used to flow out of the ground right here and um, when my parents were living here before I started the business there was just uh, two uh, cement tiles and it would be a, a submersible pump. But uh, when I started the business, I didn't thought I was adequate for selling the water like that. So I made the, this is like a huge uh, sand point. It's all constructed out of stainless steel and I, I got that made in a plate shop. I had connections because that's what I used to be, a plate worker. So this is an 8 inch stainless steel pipe. It's about approximately 15 feet long. And then at the end of the pipe, there's, um, there's a 1 8 perforated stainless steel plate that has been rolled to 8 inches diameter, so the same diameter of the pipe, and welded to it. Now, the, the rolled section of perforated plate is about 5 feet long, and at the end of it, I got a, a, a stainless steel point uh, welded to it. And um, so what I've done is I got an excavator here, and we hammered that right into the spring. Okay, and then they got another pipe here. This is where the uh, electricity goes in, in the well, and the pump is in the well. And then, so it pumps directly to the house, and there's a Y, and it goes also in the bottling shop. Uh, now, because this is a real natural spring, um, the water t tries to take the easy way out, so it wants to go up in the well so what I had to do is uh, rent a very large pump um, so I could uh, bring the level of the water down about 10 feet or so I was uh, pumping it was a three inch pipe that I was pumping at 18,000 gallons per hour and um, the level of the water dropped about 10 feet 10 feet but it didn't want to drop any more than that but that was enough so I got an excavator to dig right here four feet deep all the way to the river. It's going downhill, okay? So after the excavator dug the trench four feet deep, I used a hole saw and I drilled a three inch hole and I welded a three inch stainless steel pipe nipple and then I treaded a three inch ABS pipe to the stainless steel nipple and the um, three inch ABS pipe buried underground is level, but we're going downhill right so I will show you now the overflow of the well which is the spring so it dumps right into the river 
So there it is guys, this is the overflow of the well and it uh, comes out like that year round. The water is about 10 degrees Celsius. Now whether it's summer or winter, the water is always about 10 degrees Celsius. There's another spring there. This is all part of the same spring, okay? So all around here in the hill, there's a bed of gravel underground and this is where the spring comes out. And uh, in the summer when I was cutting the grass here, I was sinking. So I had to put a stainless steel screen with an ABS pipe so that the water could drain lower, okay? So now it's not all soft and soggy anymore. So, so basically that is the, the same water as this water here coming out of the well. Okay, so I'm just going back up the hill here. So yeah, this is my house. And that's my, uh, my bottling facility and that's my uh, delivery truck here. That's a three ton Hino truck. Um, as a truck it says I sell spring water and I also sell reverse osmosis water, which is just like distilled water really. There's no more minerals in it. Okay, let's go into the shop now. There you go guys, this is my water bottling shop. This is a table here that I, I uh, use to do my YouTube videos. Uh, sometimes I do a woodworking, I do all the cutting outside and then I do the assembly here. So those are the bottles. Usually I keep a little bit more of an inventory, so I'm going to need to purchase uh, uh, more bottles soon, so I'm starting to get a bit low. But there is some in my truck also. Okay, so like I said, there's um, the pump is in the well outside, and this is where the water comes in the shop here. It's a one inch pipe, okay, and it goes through a, um, a five micron filter. It goes out the five micron filter and it goes into a pressure tank. Then it goes out the pressure tank and it goes through another five micron filter. So there's a five micron filter before the pressure tank just to make sure there's not a grain of gravel or something, a piece of rust that goes in the tank. And also, there's another one um, out the pressure tank, just in case um, they would start to be rust in the pressure tank and let's say a flake of rust comes out the tank, well then this other uh, five micron filter will catch it. Then it goes through this one inch pipe here. And it goes through a pressure regulator here <laughs> because the, um, the pump starts at uh, 40 PSI and it stops at about 60 PSI and it would be incredibly hard to fill the bottles exactly because the filling station is set on a timer. So after this um, pressure regulator, no matter what, the pressure is always at 15 PSI. So it continues here. Okay, and it goes down to a flexible tube here and it goes through this 40 gallons a minute UV light out the UV light and then there's a solenoid valve here and then it fills four bottles at a time one two three four okay there's a stainless steel chamber you can't see it because it's on the other side of this plate here so how this work, when I fill the, the spring water, I turn the switch here to, uh, it says FR, it means uh, French River Spring. It's the spring water, RO is uh, reverse osmosis water. So when I put the switch on to spring water, it brings power to this power bar here. 
so it it automatically puts the UV light on it puts my ozonator on and it puts the UV light on for the reverse osmosis water as well okay so when I put the four bottles under the four faucets then I press the the fill button and I set my timer here to uh, if you look at the spring water it's uh, 46.4 seconds so I set the timer appropriately and when the bottles are full it stops automatically if they're not full for some reason it happens once in a while the bottles are not quite full for unknown reasons then there's a top up button so I can just tap it a little bit and just to top up the bottles and this is my washer here okay so all this is here is a um, commercial rest restaurant dishwasher and it's been modified in the plate shop the whole bottom has been modified to put four bottles in here and the top is it's just like a regular dishwasher but it's been elongated about six inches you can see here they had to uh, to add another piece of stainless steel pipe the whole thing has been elongated about six inches so the bottles have enough room here to uh, to fit so so there's a reservoir here so when we're done bottling we just lift that so it's like a bathtub the water drains okay but uh, when we put it on we make sure the plug is on we put the washer on okay we close the door and the washer starts and it goes on a, um, a fill cycle so it uses reverse osmosis water to fill the um, the reservoir and the reason I use reverse osmosis water is because it it cleans better than spring water and also it doesn't leave uh, stains uh, calcium stains on the bottles so when I first close the washer it fills the reservoir and it uses the rinse cycle to fill the reservoir so when it is on the rinse cycle it uses hydrogen peroxide you see the blue line that goes into the hydrogen peroxide it goes through a pump here okay and the computer knows so there's a wheel here that starts spinning and it injects hydrogen peroxide it injects it here with where the hot reverse osmosis water goes into the washer until the washer is full then after that you lift it you put your four bottles you close it and then it starts a wash cycle now to wash the bottles you need soap into the reservoir so now this other line here you see it's kind of pink that's because the soap is pink so now it, it will on this side of the computer here it will inject soap into the reservoir and there's a probe here that measures the concentration of the soap into the reservoir so when the concentration of the soap is at the proper concentration the computer will stop spinning okay so it it takes about 50 seconds for the wash cycle to happen and then it pauses for a few seconds and then it rinses for 10 seconds and when when it rinses okay it it does not use the water from the reservoir it uses the water directly from the reverse osmosis water that big tank you see there so it used just clean water but it will inject hydrogen peroxide with with the rinse water so it sterilizes the bottles now what when that happens when the rinse cycle kicks on um, it uses about three quarters of a gallon which goes in the reservoir but the reservoir is full so three quarters of a gallon of water will overflow and go into my drain and into the field bed 
So when that happens, the concentration of soap in the, in the reservoir goes weaker and the computer can detect it. So then this thing will spin here for like a second or so. It's going to inject like a little bit of soap. And as you wash bottles throughout the day, this, this, uh, this soap will keep injecting once in a while when the computer senses that the concentration of, of soap is getting too low. And like I said uh, before, uh, on the rinse cycle, that would only work, it will spin continuously only when it rinses for about 10 seconds. So the whole process for washing the bottle takes about one minute. Then we put the four bottles under the four faucets. We push the fill button, okay, and it takes less than a minute to fill. So in the meanwhile, we'll take four more bottles that we put a skid here. We put it in the washer. We close the washer. It starts washing. By then, your four bottles are full. So then we cap it and we put it on a, on a skid here. So by the time we've done that, those four bottles are washed. So one guy can uh, easily do 70 bottles per hour. That's wash, fill, clean, cap, and put away. So it's, uh, it's very efficient. Now this is my reverse osmosis water tank and I also sell reverse osmosis water. You see the, blue ca the, um, the red caps? That's reverse osmosis water and the one with the blue caps that's spring water. So um, uh, reverse osmosis water is about 30% of my sales. Now I will explain to you how I make the reverse osmosis water. So same thing, it's the same spring water goes through a 5 micron filter uh, into the pressure bladder tank, out the tank, through a 5 micron filter Okay, goes into the same line, but now it goes through a water softener. And I will explain to you why it goes in a water softener. So it goes through a water softener. This is a dual tank. So let's say the reverse osmosis is working for like 36 hours straight. So, you know, this is a water softener that can work 24 hours a day. So one, one tank is exhausted, it automatically switches to the other tank. So anyways, it goes into the water softener, out the water softener, goes up here, on the other side of the tank here, and it goes through another little pressure tank, out the pressure tank, through another uh, one micron filter this time, out the filter, and through the reverse osmosis system. Now, this reverse osmosis has uh, two membranes. Those membranes are semi-permeable. And there's a pump here. I hope you can see that. It's called a vein pump. So it takes the, um, the pressure of the water is between, uh, that goes into the reverse osmosis is between uh, 40 and 60 PSI. But this vein pump here, uh, pressure rises it up to uh, almost 200 psi. It's important to have a lot of pressure because it pressurizes the water through those two semi permeable membrane. Now, not only that the water goes through the membrane, there's a lot of water that flushes on the outside of the membrane continuously. The water that goes through the membranes, um, it's only the molecules of the water that can go through the membrane. So um, this would be my reverse osmosis water. So the parts per million would be zero or one. So it's extremely clean water. Now, the reason that I got water flushing on the outside is to clean the outside of the membrane. Otherwise the membrane would plug up in no time and those membranes are very expensive. So the water that flushes on the outside is wastewater. It goes out in the, in the weeping tile and goes outside back in the river. Okay, earlier I told you that my water goes through a water softener before it gets to my reverse osmosis machine. 
That's because in my spring water there's calcium and magnesium and the calcium and magnesium would would stick to the outside of the membrane and the membrane would not last very long. So what the water softener does, it will exchange calcium and magnesium for salt. So now instead of having water that's got calcium and magnesium, it has salt in it and salt will not stick to the membrane. So the membrane will last many, many times longer. So that's the reason I'm using a water softener. So there's a lot of waste. So I'll show you. This is a 500 gallon tank here. It takes about 30 hours to fill it when it's empty. I probably sell like two tanks like that per week. And um, so to make one tank of reverse osmosis water, four tank get wasted outside. So it's a big waste, but it uses a lot less energy than to make distilled water, let's say. So, when it is time for me uh, on bottling day, there's a one inch pipe here that's connected at the bottom of the tank. Okay, so it goes here. It goes behind my furnace here, behind my hot water tank. Okay, and it goes into a stainless steel jet pump. Out the jet pump, into another pressure tank. Okay, then the water goes out the pressure tank into the hot water tank. Out the hot water tank all the way here along the ceiling and into my bottle washer. So I'm using reverse osmosis water to also wash my bottles like I said earlier. Okay also from the same pressure tank I have a second line okay it goes here along the ceiling and it goes through a 5 micron filter. Out the 5 micron filter and it goes through a UV light, out the UV light, and this is where my filling station here is. So um, this is also, I have a pressure regulator here, a 10 PSI pressure regulator, because again, I have a pressure tank here. The pump will start at 40 PSI and will shut off at around 65 PSI. So this is why I have a pressure regulator here. So it's always the same pressure on this side of the pressure regulator. I have a solenoid valve here. And like I said, this is where I fill one bottle at a time. I don't sell that much reverse osmosis compared to spring water. So one bottle at a time is fine. And it, it takes like uh, 40 seconds, not even to fill one bottle. So it's a bit faster, uh, but it only does one bottle at a time. And what I want to do the reverse osmosis water, all I have to do is I flip the switch to RO and then it brings the power to the reverse osmosis solenoid valve instead of the spring water solenoid valve. Here, I'll give you a closer look here. 
So yeah, on one side of the truck, the rack will hold the 48 bottles and another 48 bottles. That's 96 bottles. And if I need to, uh, if I'm pretty busy and I'm going far away, I can also uh, put about 70 bottles on the floor and then I'm rated at uh, maximum uh, weight capacity. And this is my uh, my bottle cart here. I could put five bottles at a time. So it's pretty handy for uh, some offices. And so yeah, I sell my water to uh, offices, marina, confectionery store, gas station, grocery stores. You know. Uh, municipality, uh, nursing station, etc. Okay guys, I'm going to start bottling and uh, you're going to see how my uh, washer and filler works exactly. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to turn on the hot water tank. This is a oil hot water tank. So we're going to turn it on. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to turn on the bottle washer. Okay, so we're going to put this switch on here. Make sure the, uh, the drain valve is on closed position. And now I'm just going to close the door. Okay, now it's on the, the fill. So it's going to fill the, uh, the reservoir and it uses uh, the hot water from the hot water tank, which is not quite hot yet, but it doesn't really matter because I have a, an element in the reservoir that will keep the water warm all the time. So that will warm up the water pretty quick. So it's going to take about a couple minutes to fill up the reservoir. And because it uses the rinse cycle to fill a reservoir, the uh, hydrogen peroxide is getting injected continuously. But that's only one time, that's only to fill up the reservoir. Okay, the reservoir is full. Uh, the temperature right now is 75 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's going to climb pretty quickly because like I said, there, there is an element in the reservoir. So now we're going to lift the door and we're going to close it. So now it's doing a wash cycle. Now and it is injecting soap. So right now it's injecting some soap continuously until it reaches the desired concentration in the reservoir, like I said earlier. And this is the probe here that senses the concentration of the soap. So after a minute or so it's going to stop. The computer is going to take a reading and then it's, yeah, you see it stopped. The computer took a reading and it says, okay, there's not enough soap, so I need to add more soap. Okay, now, it, now the rinse cycle just started. So now it's rinsing the bottle. And it's not using the water from the reservoir anymore, but was using the water directly from the hot water tank, which comes from the reverse osmosis water in that tank over there.
Okay guys, so right now I'm ready to uh, start bottling the spring water. So all I need to do is turn the switch here to spring water. Okay, and it's all automatically going to do a flush. The same amount as filling uh, four bottles of water. And I'm going to flush this four times because at the end of every shift when I bottle water, I disconnect the hose here, I drain the water and I fill it up with hydrogen peroxide. And then I, um, I press the uh, top up switch here to bring water into the UV light. And I let water flow for about four seconds. And then the hydrogen peroxide is inside the UV light and it sterilizes. So that's why every time prior to filling, I need to flush four times just to make sure all the hydrogen peroxide is, is out of the UV light and out of the chamber. I don't know if you can see this here. There's a stainless steel chamber. So the hydrogen peroxide has to be gone from there also. Okay, so that's one flush. So now to do another flush, all I need to do is press the fill button. I also like to mention when I put the switch on here, it brings the power to this power bar here. So it, it brings the UV light on for the spring water and it gives power to the UV light for the reverse osmosis. Also puts power to my ozonator here. Okay. So what that does, I, and also it brings power to my uh, element here. So what that does is it brings uh, the water, it keeps the water warm. So you can see there's water in here. So what that does is keep the plastic of the caps warm so they're easier to, uh, to install on in the bottle. And this is my uh, ozone here. You can see it makes bubbles. So what that does, the ozonator, it uh, sterilizes the water, so which sterilizes the caps. All right, so we got two flush, and we got two more to go. Just to make sure all the hydrogen peroxide is flushed out of the lines. Okay, all the excess water is not going in the washer. It's going into uh, the drain. Okay guys, as you can see now, the, the element in the reservoir keeps the water at 125 degree Fahrenheit. And also when it kicks on to the, um, the rinse cycle, it's hot water now because the, the hot water tank is hot. So uh, that helps keep the, the water in the reservoir warm. Um, the element will kick in less often. So yeah, it will fluctuate a little bit. So I'll show you now that the four bottles are washed. I'll fill them. Sorry guys, it's a little bit hard to do this with one hand. Okay, so I just press the fill button. So it takes about 50 seconds to fill all four bottles.
Okay, so after the timer shuts off, it shuts off the uh, solenoid valve automatically. So I'm not going to do a top up because that's full enough. If uh, you know if they weren't quite full enough, I could just uh, click that button here to top up. But most of the time, I don't need to use it. Okay, now I'm just going to cap them. My cap are nice and warm, and they're sterilized with the ozone. Put my expiry date. Now, I give it four months expiry date, but spring water, if stored properly, let's say in a dark closet, it can last like two years. Uh, but if it's left outside in the sun or in a porch where it's really, really warm and the sun is beaming on it, you know, it could spoil as early as three weeks. So, I mean, I just give it, as a rule of thumb, I give it four months. Okay guys, so uh, it took me less than an hour to fill that one skid, which is 60 bottles. It probably took me like 45 minutes. So uh, anyways, this is Saturday today and I don't really feel like uh, bottling more. I'll, I'll do that next week. So now I'm going to shut off the, um, the bottle washer. Shut off the switch. Okay, and now I'm going to drain the water. Okay, so now it's draining the reservoir. Now I'm going to shut off the switch here. I'm going to shut off the valve here so I can um, drain this hose and fill it up with hydrogen peroxide. Okay, I buy my hydrogen peroxide pretty strong at 35%, but 35% uh, would be too strong to put in here, so I dilute it to approximately 8%. So I'm going to fill up this hose here with hydrogen peroxide. There, that's full. Put it back here. Okay, I got some hydrogen peroxide on my hands, so I'm going to rinse that up immediately before it starts burning my skin. Okay, now I'm going to flush it for about four seconds. All right, that's it. Now I'm just gonna let it sit there until uh, next time I'm gonna be water bottling. 
Now let's say I wanted to fill some reverse osmosis today. Now all I do is flick the switch here. Okay. So this is the solenoid valve here for the reverse osmosis. Uh, the valve sticks a little bit the first time, but after that it works fine. And there you go. So the only difference, it only fills like one bottle at a time. But it's the same thing, it works on the timer. You just have to uh, just uh, change the, the setting on the timer. And uh, that's it. This is the, the tank here for the reverse osmosis water. Uh, you can see I use quite a bit for, um, because I use the reverse osmosis water also for washing the bottles. So when it comes down another inch or so, uh, the reverse osmosis machine is automatically going to start. There's a float switch inside the tank. Okay, I flushed a couple more bottles of water of reverse osmosis because I just wanted to trigger the float switch to show you guys how it works. So as you can see, once the water drops down about 8 inches, the reverse osmosis machine starts to fill up the tank again. And when the tank is full, it's just automatically going to stop. So again, like I showed you earlier, this is just a pressure tank with a one micron filter. And now the reverse osmosis machine is working. Okay, so this is my waste water here. So I'm wasting water right now at about two gallons per minute. And this is my reverse osmosis water, and I'm producing um, half a gallon of water per minute. So wastewater is two gallons per minute. Production is half a gallon per minute. So that's what I was saying earlier. To to make uh, one tank of reverse osmosis water, I waste four outside. So this is the the line right here for the reverse osmosis water. Okay, so it goes on the top of the tank. Everything is sealed, so no dust can go inside the tank. So it's, uh, I need to clean the tank there. It's getting a bit dusty, but uh, on the inside of the tank, it's super clean. Okay, and this other line here goes outside in the weeping pile. That's my wastewater. And this line here, that, that's just a vent. You can see here the water dripping. This is where the water goes in the tank. Okay guys, that's it for this video. Um, I know it was a long video, but I felt it was important for me to go in details to show you guys how it is to, uh, to sell water for a living, you know, all the different processes. Also, two years ago, I made a video filming myself actually delivering the water. The name of the video is called A Day at Work. So at the end of this video, there will be a clickable link uh, if you guys want to watch it. Um, also, I have a, an exciting announcement to tell you guys uh, soon. Alright, so thanks for watching.